Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Lots of new products coming out of the Beijing Auto Show. Commodity prices are soaring again and how the Chevy Corvette turned its image around in Europe. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, April 23, 2010, and now the news. In a clear sign that the U.S. car market is recovering, AutoNation, the largest automotive retailer in the country, saw profits go up 60% in the first quarter. The Wall Street Journal says that other publicly traded dealership groups will probably have positive news when they report their earnings next week. It quotes Mike Jackson, the CEO of AutoNation, as saying the recovery is the real deal. But here's a development that could put a damper on that recovery. The journal also reports that global commodity prices are soaring again. The cost of rubber has gone up 74% this year after rising 92% last year. Platinum and palladium, which go into catalytic converters, are up almost 40%. The surge in commodity prices is driven by strong demand in Asia. And in a sign that Toyota's problems are far from over, Bloomberg reports that the state of Minas Gerais in Brazil is banning sales of the Corolla. There have been nine reports of unintended acceleration, which Toyota blames on the floor mats. Minas Gerais says Toyota can resume sales once it replaces floor mats in cars that have been sold and the ones in the showrooms. We learned a little bit more about Ford's upcoming police interceptor, a cop car based on the Taurus. It will have a column shifter, 18-inch wheels, a bigger radiator, and rear doors that open 71 degrees. It comes standard with a 3.5-liter V6 that is E85 capable, and the turbocharged EcoBoost version of that engine is optional. All-wheel drive is another option, and Ford believes 80% of these cars will be equipped that way. It also passes Ford's 75 miles an hour rear end crash standard. But this car will not go on sale until the late fall of 2011, which is when the Crown Victoria goes out of production. We've got some new product reveals to report on coming out of the Beijing Auto Show. We started showing you some sketches of some of these vehicles last week, but now we've got the real stuff. First up, Hyundai. According to Wards, the South Korean automaker used the show to reveal its redesigned accent, also known as the Verna, if you live in China. It features a swoopy body that looks quite a bit like the new Sonata. It's powered by either a 1.4 or 1.6 liter four-cylinder engine with 105 or 121 horsepower, respectively. Ford debuted a design study called the Start Concept. The company says the small car was inspired by megacities and the unique demands they put on vehicles. Drivers in densely packed urban areas around the world have to deal with heavy traffic, limited parking spaces, and high fuel costs. Issues the start concept is designed to address. Interestingly, it's powered by a one liter EcoBoost three cylinder engine that should emit fewer than 100 grams of CO2 per kilometer. GM showed off a concept for a Volt-based crossover called the MP5. It looks a lot like its sedan counterpart and is powered by the same Voltec powertrain. You know, Europeans used to look at the Chevy Corvette as nothing more than just a stinky bucket of bolts. Now they admire the car. So what made them change their minds? That is coming up next. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. Last night we had Doug Fian, the head of Corvette Racing on Autoline After Hours. We talked about a lot of things, but one thing that sticks out in my mind is how racing the Corvette at Le Mans and winning had a dramatic impact on how European enthusiasts regard the car. Here's a clip of that show with David Welch from Business Week and Peter DeLorenzo from Auto Extremist and myself. But when we started going to Le Mans, they, they looked at Corvette as a gas-guzzling, stinky, pollutant bucket of bolts. 
all right? And quite frankly, their perception was that they were owned by drug dealers, whores, and, 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 and pimps. Th that was the image that Corvette had over there. It was, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. We go and, and we win our first race, which was cool, all right? And I think that was 2001, okay? We had been there in 2000, finished third, and then we f won the second year there. I go back the third year, and I'm downtown at a function, and I come out, and there's flyers all over the windshield. Every car, for as far as you could see in, in downtown Le Mans. Le Mans is a big town. I mean, it's got 275,000 people in it. I'm thinking, what, what, what the heck is that? And I go up to it, and it's a bus schedule. In, in the Sarth region, they publish the bus schedule once a month and train schedule, and they, and they distribute it by, by, you know. Well, there's a picture on it. You know what the picture was? It was a Corvette, Corvette race car. I said, you got to be kidding me. Now, I mean, we couldn't have been, number one, we would never have been smart enough to think, hey, let's get our picture on the bus schedule, because we didn't know that they did it that way. All right? Number two, we probably couldn't afford it to have done it. They did it on their very own. They picked that car, U.S. car, Corvette, stinky, gas guzzling, bucket of bolts, win at Lamar, guess what? Now you're on the bus schedule. That's progress, and that is the change that has gone on throughout all of Europe. You can watch that entire interview, and it is a good one, at our website at AutolineDetroit.tv or get the podcast at the iTunes store. Just look for After Hours. Okay, it's Friday, which means it's time for our trivia quiz. We asked you this question. Car designers have a language all of their own. When they refer to the backlight of a car, what are they referring to? And the correct answer is the backlight is the back window of a car. And the winner is Roger Godoba of Washington, Michigan. Congratulations, Roger. You just won an AutoLine Detroit coffee mug. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.